Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, SEO and Machine Translation 2019, What's New and What's Ahead? My name is Jane, and I will be your host. So before we begin, I just wanted to take a couple minutes to introduce our speakers and go over some housekeeping items. Our presenters today are Quinn Lamb and Arno Simon. Quinn is the Senior Product Manager for Machine Translation at SEO. She's a key member of our MT development team, and she has worked with countless customers on a wide variety of MT product applications. She's deeply involved in developing the requirements for the next-gen MT system. Arno has over 20 years of experience in pre-sales. He's also a product manager for SEL Machine Translation and has a background in cybersecurity and machine learning. He has been instrumental in deploying MT in secure environments. Now, just a I encourage you to share it with your colleagues and peers and review it after we finish as well. So we will make a copy of the slides available as well, and we will be conducting a Q&A at the conclusion of the session. Please be sure to submit your questions in uh, the Q&A tab on the right-hand side. We will do all of the questions at the end. And if we do not have time to address your particular question, we will um, after the webinar concludes. So I'd like to thank you in advance for attending. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn this presentation over to Quinn. Quinn? All right. Thanks, Jane. Hello, everyone. And thank you for joining our webinar today. It is my pleasure to provide you with an update on our SEO machine translation products. Our vision is to help our enterprise customers operate in and engage with a multilingual world with secure instant translation. With over 15 years of experience in MT research and productization, we are now in our second generation of neural machine translation technology. In the summer of last year, our NMT 2.0 set a new industry benchmark for a Russian to English MT language pair. We validated this benchmark with a human evaluation study. We asked professional translators to rate translation on the following scale, with perfect translation on one end and completely wrong on the end of the other scale. Using the rating from the human translated segment as a reference, just 24% of the translation from the top rule-based system received an equivalent rating to that of the human translation reference. The top SMT system did just a bit better with 26%. And we're not too surprised by these results really because Russian to English is a relatively difficult language direction for machine translation. Russian is a highly inflected language, a characteristic that is difficult for statistical MT. And Russian word order is much more free than English well, a characteristic that is difficult for rule-based MT. So you can imagine how pleased we were when 95% of the translations produced by the SEL Neuro MT system were labeled as equivalent quality to the human translation reference. We continued to research and advance machine translation technology forward. When compared with our SMT model in 2016, the first generation of our NMT model achieved an average of 30% higher quality. This kind of quality jump is almost impossible to achieve with gradual evolution of previous MT paradigms. And yet again, we saw another impressive jump in the average quality of our language pair with the release of our NMT 2.0 in 2018. We deliver these advancements to you in the form of SDL2 machine translation products, SDL Enterprise Translation Server, or ETS, and SDLB Global. Essentially, the same core SMT, I'm sorry, the, essentially the same core SDL MT technology is behind both products. ETS allow you to run SDL MT technology on premise or in your own hosted private environment. B Global allow you to consume MT technology in a cloud-based SaaS model. 
We understand that enterprises have different operating policies, and we therefore want to ensure that we provide our customers with flexible deployment options to meet their organization needs. So if a customer needs to ensure that their content never leaves their network, ETS is a good fit, and it is incredibly easy for IT teams to deploy, scale out, and maintain. And if enterprises would like to have all these, all these with the ease of a cloud-based service, they can enjoy Be Global with the assurance that their content only temporarily resides on Be Global just for the duration of the translation period. We respect that your content is your business and our machine translation products are offered to you with data security in mind while enabling you to solve various challenges that you have, such as how to reduce your global go-to-market time or how to enable your employees with multilingual collaboration or how to keep pace with the velocity that content are being generated while staying within budget. To appreciate the scale at which SDLMT can help, we would like to share with you a case study from our customer, MadeInChina.com. MadeInChina.com is an e-commerce connecting buyers with Chinese suppliers. While mostly operating in targeted APAC markets, MadeInChina.com serves a very large customer base. SDLMT enables MadeInChina.com with a scalable and cost-effective translation solution. In less than a year, MadeInChina.com translated over 100 billion characters across four languages with SEOMT, allowing them to better serve their customer space and keep up with their growing product catalog. The volume, variety, and velocity content translation challenges that enterprise have are what we strive to solve with SEOMT. And now my colleague Arno Simon will share with you what is new in our product line. Over to you, Arno. Thank you, Quinn, and hello, everyone. Um, so we now give you an overview of our latest and greatest product improvements. First of all, our neural language pair combinations have all been upgraded to the latest generation of neural machine translation, NMT 2.0. So you can see here a nice representation of some of our most popular languages, and we have more than 100 combinations available now. With our latest release, our main goal was to lower the barrier entry to enterprise machine translation and allow our customers to access the latest generation of neural machine translation while keeping their total cost of ownership as low as possible. So first of all, improvements for our SDL enterprise translation server, the on-premise uh, solution, also called ETS. So with ETS, we worked really hard on optimizing our algorithms and making sure that they require less power to operate. With the introductions of NMT 2.0, we have significantly reduced the hardware requirements. So why is this important? Well, one of the main cost driver for neural machine translation so far has been this. This is a graphical processing unit, so called a GPU, and this is required by neural networks. And these enterprise-grade GPUs are actually really expensive. One GPU like this one can cost more than $10,000. And so you need to buy these expensive GPUs in order to uh, run neural machine translation on-premise. So if we plot on the graph the cost of hardware required to run our first generation of neural machine translation on GPU, it would have been here. The hardware required to run NMT 2.0 on GPU already cost 33% less compared to the first generation, which is great because we already allow our customers to lower their costs. But we haven't stopped there. So far, the type of hardware was really driving the type of machine translation technology you could use. So if you had only CPUs, you could only run statistical machine translation. GPU was a hard requirement for neural machine translation. So we worked even harder, and we managed to optimize our neural models so that they can work also on CPU. 
with the latest release of ETS, you can now run NMT 2.0 language pair models on CPU-only configuration. With hardware-based optimization, you can optimize the performance of your neural language models based on the hardware available. If you have only CPU, you can decide to optimize the model for quality. It will then deliver the same quality as if it was running on GPU, but then it will be slower. Or you can decide to optimize the model for speed. It will work at high speed, but then with a potential short degradation on quality. But for both modes, because uh, the running CPU, we actually lower the cost significantly. By running in quality mode, you can cut another 50% on uh, your costs, and running in speed mode will save another 33%. So in total, in order to run neural machine translation on premise, you can actually save up to 80% on your hardware cost and still get access to the latest neural machine translation technology. The latest release of ETS also includes and introduces full Docker support. So ETS in containers provides multiple advantages, including effortless deployment, the ability to automate the scaling of the ETS infrastructure by running more containers on demand, and providing a better hardware usage based on the Docker containerization technology. All these new features are included in the latest ETS uh, release. So deploying and maintaining an on-premise machine translation has never been easier. We also released our latest version of SDLB Global, bringing the power of NMT 2.0 in the cloud. With our SaaS offering, we offer a complete range of subscriptions based on the language we require and adapted to your volume needs. All of these are accessible within seconds with no setup time. So all this is great. You can either have a secure on-premise machine translation where you can translate an unlimited amount of content for selected languages, or you can use a secure SaaS offering where you can access a broad set of languages and pay based on volume translated. But what if you need, for example, five language uh, on-premise for high volume content, but you then have a new requirement for 10 different languages, but with very low volume. What if you bought ETS for a specific department dealing with highly secure content, and now need to enable another department which is dealing with less sensitive content? What if you have, let's say, peak periods where you suddenly get a significantly high volume of content to be translated in a short time frame and would benefit from offloading some of this content to the cloud? What if you could integrate with just one system and benefit from the best of both worlds? This is what we did. And we have released the Edge Cloud feature in our latest release of ETS. Edge Cloud allows you to connect ETS to be global to get maximum flexibility in the way you deploy, you access, and you consume machine translation without sacrificing security. And let me show you how it works. So this is the administrator interface of ETS, where you can configure the infrastructure, you can enable job engines, translation engines, based on the language model installed. So what you see is a list of hosts that are currently available as part of my infrastructure. I can see the language pair and the language models available and the translation engine. If I now need to enable a new language model, I can on my main host enable Edge Cloud. So I will click on this Configure Edge Cloud button. And by clicking on it, I can now provide the details of my B Global subscription. So these are details that are available as part of uh, the uh, B Global. I will just enter this information, click Save, and you will see that within seconds, I now have all the languages that are available 
as part of my Be Global subscription appearing on the left. So it's very easy for me now to edit the, my configuration in ETS and add a new translation engine. So for example, I will choose English to Arabic. So by adding English to Arabic on my ETS infrastructure, I can just finalize my configuration. I can see my translation engine is now available. I can start it. And by starting my translation engine, it will be available to, uh, in the selected uh, list of language models available in ETS. So if I now click Quick Translate, I can see that my Edge Cloud language is now available in ETS from Edge Cloud, from Big Global. So in 30 seconds, I was able to enable a new language pair immediately available to all my users, powered by the cloud and secured by ETS. Last but not least, all our plugins have been updated to work with our latest releases. So empty plugins for the SDL ecosystem and the SDL solution, such as translation management or translation productivity with Studio, now have uh, plugins available with the latest versions of both ETS and Be Global. We also updated our Office plugin with enhanced capabilities to improve user productivity, preventing them from you know, copy-pasting content through the web UI. They can just do this, translate their emails in Outlook, translate their documents from Word, from PowerPoint, and from Excel, improving their productivity with their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, tools. And we also released new plugins for the most popular web browsers. The SDL Instant Translation plugins are now available on the browser's app store, including Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. You can translate web pages or just select a portion of text and get it translated immediately. It works with any web page, including intranets, internal wikis, also works with conference pages, and more. So with empty plugins, you can immediately enable a secure multilingual collaboration with enhanced productivity for your users. And I will now turn the presentation over to Quinn to cover the what's ahead of us. Thanks, Arnaud. So now on to what's ahead with SDLMT. As I shared earlier on, SDL is committed to continuing advancing MT quality. We will tackle MT challenges that are specific to the neural MT technology and to continue to optimize for quality while ensuring translation speed are well maintained for production needs. MT model adaptation is another category for quality improvement. As a service, SDO offers language pair model training using customer provided data. This service produces customized LP models that are more fluent on the content of the client and their terminology. We will continue to innovate our LP model training pipeline so that we can deliver this value added service to our customers. Additionally, we will be offering customers with a real-time self-service model adaptation using NeuroMT dictionary feature. A little bit more detail about this dictionary feature. This model adaptation via dictionary allows users to impact the NMT output. From a technology standpoint, this was not an easy feat to accomplish with neural network. So these features allow customers to have multiple dictionaries that can be created for the same core model, which means that one user change does not need to impact all other users. For enterprises, the separation allows each department to control their own unique terminology needs. For example, consider this source sentence, the distributor is not working well. It can be translated into German in at least two different ways with different meaning 
depending on the context that is not present in the source text itself. So for a car manufacturer, the manufacturing plant will most likely translate distributor as, and let me try this German, Zunver Heilier, referring to a car component. However, the commercial team may translate distributor as distributor in the context of a sales agency. With the dictionary feature, each department can get the right translation for their own departmental context without impacting each other. And dictionaries are easy to use. Users in real time can add and modify what is in their dictionary from the product user interface. And to use the dictionary is as simple as selecting the dictionary at translation time. Here in my screenshot, you can see how a translation is changed when a dictionary is applied. The top showing you a translation where no dictionary was applied, the bottom showing you the translation that has been updated with a dictionary apply. This same simple user experience can be enjoyed with our integration with the Microsoft Office application. For example, within a Word document, users can translate with SLETS and choose to use dictionary or not, all within the Word document interface. In 2019, we will be providing further enhancements to this dictionary feature. Additionally, we will be introducing a new self-service model adaptation capability, and more details will be announced. The beta for this new model adaptation capability will start in Q2. We are keen on delivering model adaptation capabilities because from our experience, customer data adaptation yield on average an additional 15% quality improvement. At the core, we focus on quality so that it can enable us to deliver our SELMT solution to solve various content and language challenges that enterprises have. And now over to you, Jane, to uh, moderate our Q&A session. Great. Thank you, Quinn. Thank you, Arno. That was a really informative webinar. We do have a couple questions. And just for the audience, feel free to enter your question into the tab that says, uh, um, into the question tab so that we can answer them during the session. So a couple questions that came in. Um, Quinn, I think this one is for you. Um, so you talked about the various usages, what are some of the most popular use cases for MT that our customers tackle? So there's different ways in which we can frame the use case. My personal favorite way is to digest it down into two key buckets. The first kind of bucket is what I call the use case where it allows enterprises to expand or broaden their global reach. So this means using machine translation as a quick and scalable way to enable them to translate their content so that they're able to deliver that content into multiple languages in different regions. And it could be content from knowledge-based articles that many enterprises have in abundance. Um, it can be also in the form of uh, forum, community, et cetera. So that's the, the kind of example for the expand or broaden your global reach use case with machine translation. Um, just because the sheer number of languages that the content needs to be translated into and the volume of the content itself and how rapidly those content gets updated, that machine translation is really a suitable fit uh, from both a scalability and a cost effectiveness standpoint. It's really the only viable solution. Then the second bucket of common use case with SEO machine translation for enterprises is what we like to describe as the ability to enable an employee or, um, or workforce to be able to better collaborate cross borders. So it's more about we have a global team uh, that have different languages. They might be producing content in their local language. 
how can we use machine translation to bridge this language barrier across the different teams so that assets can be reused and that more internal knowledge can be shared among the employees? Great, that was a great answer. Um, Arno, here's one for you. Uh, does this integrate with other products and systems, and how do customers use this within their own IT environments? Yes, so um, our machine translation solutions comes with a variety of plugins and connectors. Uh, so as we mentioned, we have connectors for uh, translation management systems, translation productivity. We have Office plugins, the web browser plugins, we also have direct connector to third-party solutions, such as uh, chat solutions, uh, e-discovery solutions. So we have really a wide range of connectors that are already predefined and exist and can be used in existing environments. Uh, but the other way to integrate machine translation is by leveraging the API. So both solutions, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, uh, offer RESTful API that can be used to integrate machine translation into existing workflow uh, by leveraging this API capability. Uh, so with like a couple of lines of code, you can start consuming machine translation using the API, and by integrating uh, this API into existing workflow, you can actually enable multilingual workflows within uh, seconds. Great, thank you, Arno. Great, uh, great answer. Um, there's actually a question for Quinn from our audience. Uh, does this dictionary feature mean that a client who has uh, an NMT subscription uses one engine but has different outputs depending on the types of content processed? So, if I can reframe that question slightly different, um, so the dictionary feature when used um, can impact the output. Um, so depending on the type of content that are being uploaded for translation, and if that content has a match with the dictionary that the user has specified or created, um, then yes, the user can expect that the output will be different when the dictionary is applied versus when the same core engine uh, does not have dictionary applied. And that same core engine uh, can, can use multiple dictionaries. So the users can actually create different dictionaries uh, depending on the domain or the content they will be translating and trigger the appropriate dictionary at the time of translation uh, so that they can leverage what they have input in the dictionary. Uh, great, hopefully that answered uh, the question. So. Um, Arno, here's a one uh, in terms of implementation. Are there any best practices you can share with the audience as far as uh, implementation, especially for a secure environment? Of course. So um, when you deploy machine translation, uh, the main drivers uh, in order to implement the machine translation on-premise are the volumes that you need to translate and the languages. Uh, so as part of the implementation methodology, uh, we will define uh, and help our customers estimate uh, the languages that they need and the volumes that needs to be translated to define the best architecture and the uh, best hardware requirements to serve these needs. Uh, so this is uh, the first one. The second is machine translation uh, and ETS uh, is a solution that can really work without any connectivity to the internet. So we can really help in uh, securing and making sure that uh, ports and connectivity which is required are fully secured and that no information is leaving the secure environment of the customer. And uh, the third one is ETS because it's an enterprise grade solution can also connect to LDAP or Active Directory to enable uh, users. Uh, so uh, we usually, during the implementation, also enable connectivity to these uh, directory services to make sure that once the system is up and running, 
users don't have to use a new set of credentials to access machine translation. They just reuse their LDAP or AD credentials and can start using machine translation immediately. Great, thanks Arnaud. Um, this is a question, uh, it's for Quinn, but maybe Arnaud can help as well. Uh, can a multi-term database be used as a dictionary for NMT? That's a quick, great question. Um, and our response is that a multi-term database or any other kind of existing terminology databases that our client may have uh, serve as a good starting point to use for dictionary. Um, and the reason I say it's a good starting point is because usually these terminology database were created with human translator in mind where the application or the use of a particular suggestion in that terminology database requires the human to assess its relevance and its applicability to the content. So with machine translation, we need to massage these existing terminology databases a little bit so that they're less ambiguous for the machine translation process. Um, so what I mean in you know, some common tasks of massaging that dictionary would be taking some uh, actions such as making sure that for a particular source term that your suggested output term is just one rather than I have seen before where a particular source can have multiple uh, suggested targets. So it's just about handling some of those things that originally were designed for humans to take actions or to deliberate on um, so that it's more automated for the machine translation process. Uh, but yes, absolutely multi-term databases, other terminologies are a great starting point for creating a dictionary. Great, thank you, Quinn. Um, here's one for Arno. Uh, Arno, you said that, or you suggested that an on-site instance is most suitable for highly sensitive materials. Uh, does that mean that a SAS option is not 100% secure? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so yeah, maybe I should have rephrased this. Um, the on-premise instance is usually really suitable for sensitive organizations that usually on, you know, when they operate in a regulated industry or in government areas, they are not allowed to use cloud-based solution. Uh, so usually ETS is a great fit for these organizations because they can really ensure that all of their content will always remain uh, within the secure on-premise environment of the customer. Um, this being said, our SaaS offering is also fully secured. We uh, take all the appropriate measures to, uh, to secure it, to segregate content. And uh, as uh, Quinn was mentioning at the beginning of this presentation, uh, we don't retain data uh, only for a very limited period of time uh, for the translation to be, uh, to be performed. So uh, both options are secure, but one is more adapted to type of customers that actually can't use cloud. Great. Um, thanks, Arno. Um, and uh, at this point in time, I'm actually we're actually going to wrap up this webinar. Uh, we want to keep it a little bit shorter to give everybody a bit of time back. Uh, thank you so very much for attending. Please don't forget to uh, visit the attachments, the link section of the webinar uh, after you see, when you see it on demand. I hope you found it useful, and we look forward to seeing you again. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so much.